Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Natalie the Dawn. I remain your host, Chad, if you're E333, and this last match of tonight will be between Sigero and Anir on Archer's Valley, a map I haven't seen in a long time. Actually, very macro oriented, definitely an old hat total annihilation map. As you can see, lots of metal. Lots and lots of metal. It's just everywhere. So, that's the thing. And you're going for the Spiderbot Factory, and Sigero also going for Spiderbot Factory. Both players going for spiders, though Sigero a bit more aggressive on their end. Going for a very heavy rush, and I, I can't say I blame him. I mean, not a bad idea, given the circumstances. On the other hand, Anir, playing a bit more passively, still has the same fleas. I mean, this is this is how you play spiders. You just send fleas everywhere and use them to figure out where to place anything else. Although there will be a few conflicts, because these two fleas will meet up, and there'll be a slight, slight battle of reconnaissance there. But overall, this should be relatively clean. At this point, though, Anir does know that Sigero has gone for Spiderbot Factory. So considering Spider versus Spider, Anir continues to go for the fleas, and I actually bit surprised. I thought we saw Venom, but nope, just the Weaver. On the other hand, Sigero is also going for the Weaver because why not? I mean, you want to get workers, you want to get expanding. This is a macro-oriented map. You want as many expansions as possible on this map as quickly as possible. Sigero's already got a bit of a head start too, having expanded a bit to the back from their starting location. Well, Anir, on the other hand, starting in a safer location, but as a result, it's a little bit harder to spread out from here. That being said, Anir is managing to get an advantage on the intelligence game. At least for now, it's massive fleas coming in from Sigero because, I mean, if it's spider versus spider, fleas are actually really useful as a raider unit. Like, against pretty much any other factory, the flea will go down to any other raider. Any other raider will act like a riot unit, but spider versus spider? Fleas? Mass fleas? is going to be a legitimate strategy. At least until they run into static defenses, and then they're just dead. But, you know, prior to that time, which will be happening very soon for Sigero's forces here, it works fine. It's just, you know, until then. But even then, with four left, there's still a possibility of some damage being dealt. I mean, the picket went down at the very least. But at this point, yeah, there's not much to be said. This is... I shouldn't say that. There's... I mean, there's a lot to be said, but there's just not much left for that particular force... Sigero's going to manage to get a little bit of intelligence as a result, but not a huge amount. Just a bit about some expansions. Anir, on the other hand, still actually has been kind of losing the intelligence game. I mentioned they were just winning it before, but Sigero coming in with these mass fleas, turning that around. Breaking up some of the knowledge, breaking up some of the fleas that Anir had just set up on, on stakeouts. So overall, the intelligence game is still kind of up in the air, but Sigero's definitely got the advantage. Anir, realizing that's a good idea, goes for it themselves. So, I would say that Sigero has the advantage, and they're going to hold on to it. I mean, the entire north side is essentially theirs. The south side, they have quite a few fleas in that Anir doesn't even know about. And Anir, I mean, they can't really find any place to put their fleas easily that haven't been spotted by Sigero or soon will be. I mean, that's the thing. Sigero just has more fleas. Anir, however, spending the money on the fleas as well. Just, it's just a question of positioning, of where you put them. Sigero has... Like, they have more fleas, they have a larger army of fleas, they've managed to kill about five more fleas in terms of the actual numbers, but... Yeah, it's just a question of how many fleas can Anir bring to bear in one location. Because that's really what it comes down to, and Anir losing again, many more fleas! All these fleas going down! I mean, it's weird to say, because normally fleas are a universally bad thing, but in this case, it's only bad for Anir. Like, Sigero's fleas are doing a fine job, actually. A very fine job. They might even be able to get rid of this weaver. Oh, yeah, they totally will. This weaver is completely dead. So that's one weaver down, and that leaves you know, a couple more left for Anir, but that's not good. Sigero has advantage there. They're, I mean, these fleas as well can come in here and get rid of the picket before it reloads, which it won't. The picket will definitely reload in time. But, hey, valiant effort. At least they tried. Still, at the same time, Anir managing to get a little bit of damage in, getting rid of a metal extractor, actually keeping their slight economic advantage if they had the production to use it, and not killing the... Oh, that's got to be painful. They're directed to attack, but they're on hold fire and hold positions, so unfortunately these fleas, unless directly told to move, are not going to be attacking that weaver. Bit of a shame, too, because that weaver was vulnerable. That could have been an easy kill, but unfortunately... Fire state, move state, got in the way a little bit. That's one thing you gotta be careful about sometimes. I mean, you always override you can always override it by moving, but when it comes to attack orders or when it comes to units being nearby, then it can be a problem. 
At this point, though, Sigaro has the territory. I mean, Anir's trying to get back in, trying to push out wave after wave of fleas to get what they can. At least to figure out what the heck's going on. But at this point, Sigaro has the territory. Anir has a bit of stronger economy, though. Getting some nice raids in. I mean, there's that. Anir has managed to keep their their economy reasonably healthy, but now Sigaro sigero has gone ahead. Sigaro is really finally taking advantage of their extra worker. They're taking advantage of their massively aggressive playstyle. They're taking advantage of this center four metal metal extractor, which is of course going to go up considerably higher as these power plants are built nearby. So yeah, Sigaro overall they got a strong position. Anir, on the other hand, deciding this is a good time to switch to gunship. Switch over to gunship. Build up a few... Oh, wow, really? Building up a few revenants. Used to be called Black Dawns, now called Revenants. Oh, wait, it's December. I mentioned I would stop using the old names come December, and it is December today, so that is the case. So yeah, it is a revenant. And that will be interesting. I mean, spider bots do have a tendency to get clumped up. I can see why the revenant would be useful. But at the same time, it's a question of will it actually survive long enough, because... At this point, both players are accessing a lot, so it's hard to say. Economy is essentially just determined by their energy, not by their metal. But Sigero has more of that. Although, not much of the production in their main factory. But still, Sigero has more of an economy for metal. Or for energy, I should say. Anir has a handful of solar plants, and that's about it. And especially with the front lines being pretty well destroyed, Anir managing to hold off as best they can with their commander. But even then, their commander, heavily threatened, not going to die. But at the very least, they are losing ground. That's the biggest thing. They lost ground. They lost... Well, lost lotuses. They don't lose a whole lot of power infrastructure, but they need to build that power infrastructure, and they haven't. Sigero has. sigero has been building it consistently. Throughout this entire match, they've been building power all over the place, while Anir has four. They have four power plants. And they have seven now, but it, that's very recent, so there's not a whole lot going for them as far as power goes, and there's not a whole lot going for them as far as production goes. Now, they're finally able to get the Revenant up, but even then, it's still going to take about a minute, even with that extra power. It's still a lot, especially since they are still building a bunch of other stuff. They're building their power infrastructure as well. I mean, so we got a bunch of metal percent. I got a bunch of build power being expanded there. Overall, though, it's a bit of an odd choice. Like, really, considering the fact that there's no territory in Anir's favor, there's very little going on as far as having any real military presence. I mean, fleas don't count anymore. That that time has passed. I don't see why a single heavy unit that deals periodic splash damage is going to be the way to go. It might work, but it just does not seem likely. But we'll see what happens. I mean, Anir might manage to find a really good spot to use and get rid of a few of these hermits and maybe push in from there, but considering Firewalker's coming up, we have very little territory here for Anir, so the Firewalker's not going to have to do a whole lot of work to burn Anir's entire base to the ground. And not a whole lot of an economic expansion, on top of the fact that Anir has been accessing this entire time. There has been no point in this match where Anir has not been accessing. And Sigero, they've gotten their access under control. They have their energy up, they have their production up, everything's built up. Sigero's good. Anir, yeah, they know they've lost. I mean, this is... I mean, this is a little bit embarrassing, honestly. <laughs> I mean, it's really a shame. It really just came down to the fact that Anir didn't manage to expand as they were constructing while Sigero did. Anir lost a worker. Sigero, maybe more than that, but definitely at least one worker. Sigero didn't. I mean, there's not a whole lot that Anir did specifically wrong in terms of overall plays, except, you know, I mean, I don't agree with the Revenants right now. But hey, it gets rid of the Commander at the very least. It's still, Anir is coming in this too little too late because what, what do they have economically speaking? Not much. They didn't push it. They didn't manage to get the fleas up to get it. Their fleas weren't coordinated enough to take it, so ultimately they did lose just the sheer number of fleas that were coming at them in any one situation. Every battle, there was a handful of fleas coming in that did the trick. Well, actually, come to think of it, Anir's managing to get a fair bit of territory back. Or at least managing to break a fair bit of Sigaro's hold. Might actually be working out all right. I mean, it's still, it's still an uphill battle, but Anir, they're not completely dead. That gunship plant... That gunch of plants turned out to not be a terrible idea. I mean, at this point, you know, the Revenants are still doing a fine job tearing apart Sigero's back lines. I mean, the, the, the air is in, the tarantulas are in. There's there's no easy way that these are going to continue dealing the damage they have. But still, it's broken a fair bit of Sigero's power. The problem, however, is it didn't break the center. It broke the commander, it broke a lot of the pressure on the center if the Hermits can be destroyed. 
but it didn't break the center as it were. It didn't make it so that the center was done. That's the thing, is that the center is still there. The four plus metal extractor is still there. With overdrive, it's getting closer to six. Like, Segedo still has a lot going for them as far as that one metal extractor goes. If they lost that, it'd be a big deal, but they haven't. And Anir, they managed to take a bit of metal. Managed to get a bit of overdrive as well. But too little too late as far as their energy infrastructure goes. It's always important in this game to have energy when you need it. Exactly when you need it. Like, not later. Not five minutes later in the match when you no longer need it as much because you're done. Which you are. But hey, I mean, it wasn't bad until that point. Like, the midway point is really where things started to turn around, as the graphs show. Like, that's when Anir started accessing, like, mad. That's when they stopped having the production needed to handle their metal income. When they really stopped having the metal income to work with. While Sigero just went off the charts metal income-wise. So yeah, a lot of it was just not enough expansion during the early game. When the flea fights were happening. So, given that, I would say that yeah, it was still a pretty good match. The, the end of it got a little bit... It was clear that it was Segato's game. But earlier on, yeah, Nia had a pretty good shot at taking some good gains. I think if they got rid of the Weaver here, it would have given them the opportunity to expand without having this entire northwest side become money for Segato and basically give Segato even more of a lead. That would have given Nia a bit more momentum to get some, get some room to build over to the west and just generally build up more of an economy. But really, though... That game was decided by energy infrastructure first and foremost. That was the biggest thing. Energy infrastructure is why it's a you have to be careful about this stuff. If it weren't for that, it would be fine. It wouldn't have been a problem. But because of the energy infrastructure, there is no way that Anir could match the Ghetto's production. Wait, 8 frames per second? Okay, well... Hang on, what is... Is my stream all messed up? I mean, people are saying something about that, but I didn't want to address it on stream, but people are saying something's wrong? With FPS? I don't know. I mean... Hmm... Okay, because I'm not getting any notifications from Twitch or from OBS that the stream is bad. Or there's any issues with frame rate or with bit rate or anything. Oh, okay. Alright, well, people are saying maybe... Okay, maybe I could do another one. Apparently there's a live game that's starting, so... Okay, we'll do one more. Do one more. Stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple minutes. Not sure what it's going to be, though, because I hadn't planned it out. But we'll see what happens. So, yeah, stay tuned.